Hey guys, it's Lizzie here. So today I'm going to show you how to do the 2017 version of Pennywise the Clown from the film It, which is the Stephen King novel. So um, I hope you love the tutorial. I had a lot of fun doing this and I will be creating the original Pennywise as well, back from 1990. Um, once that video is done, I will link it below and then we can sort of compare the two looks as well, which will be cool. So um, yeah, I hope you have fun recreating this look and um, enjoy the tutorial. Thank you, bye bye. The first thing we're going to do is block out our brows. We're going to get some toner and just remove any excess oil in the brows just so that they're nice and clean so we can glue them down and block them out a lot easier. Then what you want to do is just brush the hairs upwards. You want to get some spirit gum, this one's from Krylon. And you want to just sort of brush it through the hairs upwards and then through the hairs backwards so that you're really covering all the way around each hair in glue. You want to be careful not to drop any into your eye, so I really made sure to wipe any off this sort of um, stick. Then you want to press the hairs upwards. By doing this and sticking them in that direction, they're not going to overlap so much, making it an easier, sort of flatter surface to cover. Then you want to press the area just to make it nice and sticky. Then I'm going to get some Ben Nye Nose and Scar Wax and press that into the area. Now for this I'm going to use a tiny bit of wax at a time and just roll it up into the brows and remove any excess. You're just sort of filling in the gaps with the wax to get a nice smooth texture. Better to start off with a little bit of wax and then we can build it up. I'm then going to get a spatula and just press it up even more. And this will almost scrape off the excess as we go. If you have your own way of blocking out your brows, um, lots of people use glue sticks and things like that, then go ahead and use whatever you're most familiar with. Again, I want to get rid of any excess above and below the brow. And there's a before and after, so I'm just going to get the other brow to the same stage. When you are doing your brows with this method, make sure you have um, mastics or spirit gum remover as you don't want to be sort of pulling out any of your brow hairs. Now we are going to leave them at this stage because we're going to be covering them in white face paint anyway, so I most probably won't need to colour correct them as they are quite light, but we'll get to that in a bit. So now onto the bald cap. Um, I've got this fancy dress one, so it's really thick. And I thought that would be better as they're quite accessible, they're reasonably cheap, this was £2.99 and they're a lot thicker so they cover the colour of your hair quite well because I have quite dark hair but most of that will be covered with a wig anyway. Um, so now we've got to get our hair into here. So what I'm going to do because um, for me this isn't a costume that I'm going to be walking around in, I'm going to put my hair into a low ponytail but for yourself if this is a costume you're going out in what you want to do is, um, because he has quite a padded head, so you can get your hair and bring it back up and sort of place it on the top of your head and bobby pin it down. So you grab your hair, you might want to twist the bottom and then you'd want to bring it back up over the top of your head and sort of flatten it on top of your head. You can braid it if you want, it doesn't matter too much because we're putting um, a wig over the back of our head anyway, so it doesn't matter if there's texture. The ball cap doesn't need to be smooth and he has very big temples at the front of his head. So I'm going to work out which side of this board cap is the front, um, I believe that'll be here, and then you want to attempt to put it on. It's like a swimming cap. Now I need all this excess up here because we're going to be padding this out. So, what I'm going to use for that is some cotton wool. <laughs> I look ridiculous. So I've got this giant bag of cotton wool, it's sort of a big reel of it to pad my head as I wanted long sheets of it to sort of place along here. Once we've done that and padded it, I'm going to cut out the ear bits and cut it to size, but I don't want to do that first in case I cut off too much and by the time it's padded, I then reveal too much hair. So I'm going to pad it first, cut it and glue it. Right, so I'm going to open this all the way up because I want to take off big sheets. Normally you sort of pull from the middle. So I'm going to unravel it like a giant furry toilet roll. And break away 
a big old section. Oh, it's very dusty now in here. So once you've got your long piece, I'm going to rip it into sections. So now I've got these rectangle pieces and they're going to be trying to pad sort of underneath my hair in this sort of fashion. I'm going to do one there and another piece a bit further back. There we go. This would be slightly easier with someone else's help, but that's fine. Now I want to just shape this so it all roughly ends at the same point. Right, so once you've made your head that little bit bigger and it sort of gradually gets um, wider at the top, you want to then glue down the edges and cut out the ears. What I'm going to do is get a pencil and just draw exactly where my ears are and where I need to do the cut so that when I peel this back off and cut, it's not sort of a guess. You then want to get your scissors and be careful not to cut your hair or your ears. Put your hands behind. So I've just put in a couple of fingers behind the bald cap and then cutting it. So once you've cut your bald cap into shape, you want to glue down the edges. So I'm going to take that Mastix glue again and I'm going to flip up the edges. Be careful to wipe off all the excess. Work from the centre of my head outwards. So, you'll be able to see where the glue is. Now this isn't necessarily the way I would apply a bald cap to someone else, but to someone else it is a lot easier than yourself. Be careful of your sideburns, don't get too much in there. But with your mastics remover you will be fine if there is any, but you know, still don't get crazy. You might need to gel back or hairspray back your sideburns if they are getting in the way. We're going to do this all the way around to, well, I'm going to do it to about here, but again go all the way around the back if you are wearing this as a costume. As you're gluing the bald cap down, do remember to keep tapping the spirit gun before you go to lay the, um, the bald cap on it, otherwise it will not stick. You need to tap it until it gets tacky and then you put the product on, um, the bald cap on. So, um, also when you're doing bald cap for other things for film on TV, you'd bleed the edges into your skin with some acetone to dissolve them. But because this is a fancy dress one, um, you don't do that because it's not going to dissolve. So there will be this ridge, but that's okay. Um, because we're going over a face paint and then we're going over some different textures in a bit as well that will help blur all of that out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put white cream product all over our face. Um, for that I've got this product from Snazaru and it's the Clown White. Now for this I'm going to just take my um, Real Technique sponge and really press it in there. I want quite a lot of product. Then what I'm going to do is sort of evenly distribute it over my skin, sort of smearing it into place, and then we'll bounce after to get rid of any lines. So what I've done is done all the face and about up to here on the head, and I've left around the eyes pretty blank because they're going to be black anyway. I've gone a little bit down the neck, I might go lower depending on how big the like ruffles of the top part of my costume are, so we will see. I've gone over the ears. The reason I use the Real Technique sponge is because it's nice and even and it's quite quick and pretty much everyone can get their hands on something like this. Um, doesn't really matter what brand or those disposable cosmetic sponges. But if not, you can use just a normal makeup brush, but you just might get some lines. So you might want to just tap over it. So um, what I'm going to do now is attempt to put my contact lenses in. This will only be the second time I've ever done it and the first time it took me an hour. Um, but I want to do it before I start doing the black around my eyes. So uh, I'll be right back. I look insane. Um, so yeah, now I've got my contact lenses in. It didn't take an hour this time and it took like five minutes. It's sort of a bit weird, like I can see yellow everywhere. What I'm going to do now is set my skin with this white powder from Stargazer. Um, it's just a pressed powder. I'm going to take my Real Technique sponge and just sort of wipe it around in here and then set all this in place. 
Now the good thing about this character, the makeup looks very much um, quite lived in and rough. So you don't need to be smooth, your white base doesn't have to be very even, like up close mine isn't, um, you know, it's sort of it's fairly quick if you don't take forever to get contact lenses in. The reason we want to set this is because we're going to be doing the red mouth detail and around the eyes. We don't want the colours to mix together, um, make sort of like pinks and things like that. If you don't have a white powder, you can use a translucent one. I just happen to have this because um, <laughs> my skin's quite fair and it works quite well just for setting my foundation in general. I try to make this um, quite achievable for you. So in terms of, I don't want to use loads of really specialist special effects products because um, I think it's quite difficult for most people to get. So this white cream base um, normally doesn't come in industrial amounts. You can normally get quite small ones. Every supermarket will be selling white cream or you could use white face paint. Next we need liquid latex and toilet roll. Um, I'm just going to rip off a couple of sheets. I'm then going to sort of peel it in half, you know, because it's two ply or whatever it's called. And then just going to rip this up into any old rough pieces. You don't want any sort of straight edges. This is going to be for the texture at the front of the head. Um, what it looks like he's got is something called Fuller's Earth on his head, um, which is like a face mask, sort of like a clay based mask. Um, and it cracks when it dries. So you'd paint it on and then it would crack um, and cause that cool sort of scaly effect he has. Not really scaly, it's like dry earth deserty sort of look. Um, I don't have any fuller's earth and it is reasonably difficult to get in terms of like you wouldn't be able to just buy it on the street, you'd need to order it online, um, you know, Halloween shops aren't going to sell it. Um, and then once you have fuller's earth on to make it white you'd have to go over with your white face paint or cream and that can take quite lots of fuller's earth off. So it's better if you then airbrush over but again airbrushes aren't something just anyone has. Now to apply your liquid latex, you do need a latex sponge. You don't want to use a brush, otherwise you will be throwing that brush away. Um, just to let you know, this one's a bit stained as I've used it to just sort of put on some product the other day. But um, yes, you want to use something that is disposable. So I've just put the latex on a plate. When it dries, it will completely peel off so it won't damage the plate. And then you want to get your sponge, dab it into the latex, Dab it onto the area, be careful around your brows, and just start placing on the scales. And ripping off the edges. This is a good time to start disguising that line of where the bald cap met your skin. And then to make the latex dry quicker, you want to use a hairdryer in between each layer. So I'm going to do sort of one layer all over and then I'll hairdryer. You want to take the scaly skin back as far as where your wig will be. Now the next thing we're going to do is mark out the brows. Now they look more like scars, so they're like indented into the skin. Um, I'm not going to do that because it's slightly more complicated. What we're going to do is just use a grey eyeshadow and then just draw on the shape of them. So it's this sort of shape. Once you've done it quite lightly, you can go back over and just perfect it a little bit more. Now again, you use what you've got. If you've got a grey face paint, you could use that. Grey eyeliner, um, a black eyeshadow, but very minimal. Anything like that will do. Now what we're going to do is do the black around the eyes. For that, I'm going to take a NYX Jumbo Pencil. This is in Slate, which is a dark grey, but you could use black bean in black or any black base that you've got. You could use a normal eyeliner, a black gel eyeliner. I quite like these ones because they don't really set. So it will be quite movable and quite messy. I want to get it right up into the hairs, especially as I have um, really fair like blonde ginger hairs. I don't want them to show through. Going all the way under the eye, really messy. I'm sort of quite circular. If you buy one of those sets of cream products which have the white in that you're using as a base, it might well have a black in it and that would be perfect. Again, it's something that's unlikely to set, so it makes it that bit more smudgier and lived in. Right, so now that we've done that, I'm just going to get a, just a rough brush 
and blend out the edges just slightly just so there's not like pencil marks as much as we're not making like a sexy smoky eye um, we still can't really leave those edges too rough we're used to the contact lenses now a whole new woman now I'm going to take this um, black eyeshadow this by the way is a palette from Krylon and you're going to just pat the black over the top really tap off the excess and then going to take that same brush that we blended it out the pencil with and just bend this out a little bit more now for his smile I'm going to take a red cream colour mix it with a little bit of black to make a deeper red so it's not quite as vibrant as this okay once you've mixed up your colour I'm going for this lighter end here we're then going to paint that on so we'll do the lips first he's got quite a big lower lip and a thinner top lip if you're using ordinary makeup you can use a red lipstick um, but I'm sticking with the creams because I figured most of you will buy a set of all the cream colours. And then you want to draw lines out here, curving back up to above your eyebrow. Once you've sort of got a rough idea, you can then fill them out properly. And then it goes straight up here as well. Next up is the nose and we're going to use the same colour. And it's just basically really short at the end. It's not a very big round nose. It looks like his nose but with makeup on. It doesn't look like a stick on clown nose. Right, so I've done all the red. Um, now I'm going to put tooth paint on my teeth obviously um, for that I'm using this one by Grimes and it's in a brown shade I don't know if it has a set shade um, he doesn't have particularly crazy teeth from the pictures that we've seen like the original one turned into really like pointy teeth so he was like super scary um, but I just feel to make them look a bit grubbier would be a bit better so what you need to do is really dry off your teeth first um, so you want to get some tissue and like Dry off your teeth. I'm just going to push it on now. Now this stuff dries pretty quick so you really want to press it on straight away. The way to get rid of that is with alcohol, um, like on a cotton pad or on a tissue again, that will get rid of it um, as it is waterproof. One thing to say, if you are going cream makeup instead of um, face paint, it will not set completely, so there is a chance that it will move about. So just keep that in mind with whatever sort of makeup style you choose to do. So now I'm going to put on my wig. Um, for that I did cut it up, so I had the normal wig and then I cut out a triangle out the back, so that will end up at the back of my neck now where the triangle is missing and I'm going to stick that to the front of my head. So we go through that, you will need your spirit gun again. So this is the wig I've got, um, and like I said, I've cut out a triangle at the back. That's gonna go at the back of my head, and this is the random triangle piece, which will go somewhere at the front. <laughs> very cool. Right, okay. His hair isn't really a clown wig. It is very much like tapered out the side, but I couldn't find anything like that. And you know, this is more a rough idea of it. So I'm gonna place this on quite far back because he's got quite big temples that are quite bald and then with our triangular piece of hair that we cut out that is going to go from the middle forward I'm sure actually once this film comes out there'll be an exact wig of it but um, there wasn't when I was looking so place this on here now what I'm going to do is get some hairspray to sort of scrape back these bits to give it the illusion of the shape of his obviously it's not identical because it's a very curly wig his hair's quite straight it's looking good 
So, what I need now is my ruffles, and I think I'm done. So there we go guys, that's the makeup look complete. I hope you found it helpful. It's a relatively cheap costume to do, well makeup look to do. Um, so hopefully you have fun with it. I'd love to see your recreations of the look as well, so to be sure to tag me in them. Um, and this collar I just made myself, I got some sort of beige fabric, sewed all the ruffles in and did three layers of it. Yeah, so pretty straightforward. Um, you can hire whole clown costumes if you were going to go out in this outfit, which I'd advise because this is a lot of fun. I keep seeing people out of my window and they're like, what's going on in there? Um, so yeah, I hope you have a lovely Halloween, whatever you do. Um, if you have any ideas for any looks that you want me to do, then do comment them below so that I can start making them and planning. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you all soon. Take care, bye-bye.